In the last lecture, we have uh, seen the McCormack scheme for compressible flow, which consisted of a predictor step and a corrector step, which enables us to go from u i j n to u i j n plus 1 in uh, uh, this. We have noted that this can be used for the coupled equations describing the, uh, the fluid flow. And we also noted that each of these predictor and corrector steps is explicit uh, calculation and also that it is both uh, second order accurate in both time and space. And so it is order of accuracy is delta t square, delta x square and delta y square that is men not mentioned here. And this enables us to solve for rho, rho u, rho v and et from which we can evaluate rho u, v and internal energy from which we get using the equation of state we get the pressure and temperature. Now, because this is an explicit method it has stability limits potentially stability limits and uh, <coughs> when you have these coupled equations and when you have nonlinear equations uh, all these complications uh, when these complications arise it is not possible to get an, an exact analytical expression for stability and uh, so McCormack have uh, estimated the stability and expressed this temp time step delta t that, uh, that can be taken in uh, uh, using a factor of safety f. So, this is delta t must be less than uh, f times delta t C f l. So, C f l is obviously the Curon Friedrichs uh, uh, Louis limit uh, and that is true for an inviscid fluid ok. That, uh, that was what we had dou u by dou t plus C dou u by dou x equal to 0 no diffusion term. So, that is an inviscid uh, fluid. So, delta C f l is the inviscid limit which is given by delta t must be less than u by delta x plus v by delta y plus a times 1 by delta x square plus 1 by delta y square square root. So, this is where a is the speed of sound and uh, this is the two dimensional form of the inviscid uh, C f l limit. So, it is a two dimensional incompressible uh, form of the C f l limit is what this is and it does not include viscosity effects and therefore, they suggested that it is the delta t that is possible is the delta t divided by 1 plus 2 divided by mesh Reynolds number and where the mesh Reynolds number is defined as u delta x by nu or v delta y by nu whichever is the minimum is the one that is to be taken. So, let us examine this let us examine this uh, uh, limit to understand what it is uh, what it is showing. It is saying that the delta t that you can take has an upper limit it has to be less than some value and what is that value in the case of inviscid flow 1 d flow this is where the, the delta t must be less than uh, the Cura number of equal to 1 ok. So, the delta t given by the inviscid Cura number limit is, uh, uh, is one condition. <coughs> and that value is not really correct because what we are dealing with are uh, equations which include viscous stresses. So, there must be a modification and here they are dividing by 1 plus some quantity here which is a positive quantity and we, because it is a positive quantity it is 1 plus something. So, that reduces the delta t that is allowable here. So, the fact that you are dealing with viscous stresses reduces the delta t to less than what is possible with inviscid condition. Now, with this inviscid condition itself we put Cura number equal to 1 for the 1 d case and here we have a 2 d case and for 2 d case delta t is not just must be less than u by delta x it is u by delta x plus v by delta y. Now, for a case with compressible flow which is what we are dealing with here there is a speed of sound which also comes into picture. So, this is u by delta x plus v by delta y plus a which is also a speed. So, it is equal to this and we need to have a length scale 
in this case it is delta y because it is v and delta x because of this and here you are taking square root of 1 by delta x square plus 1 by delta y square. Okay. So, all of this together uh, fixes the delta t for the inviscid CFL limit and uh, this value the delta t that is possible for the viscous fluid flow thing must be less than this value by a factor of safety which is 0 0.9. So, that means that this at least 10 percent margin is here and in addition to that it is decreased by uh, this much. Uh, and what is this Re here that is the mesh Reynolds number. Reynolds number has a velocity scale, length scale and the kinematic viscosity here. So, here you have two velocities u and v which one to take. So, you take you evaluate the Reynolds number for the two cases taking the mesh dimension delta x delta y as the length equal to the length dimension. So, it is called a mesh Reynolds number. So, this is u delta x divided by nu the kinematic viscosity is one Reynolds number and another estimate of Reynolds number is V delta y by nu whichever is the minimum you take here and you take the minimum because you are dividing by Re and that makes it conservative. So, if Reynolds number for example, this is 5 and this is uh, 10 here you take the minimum you take 5 here and so 2 by 5 is 0.4. So, this is 1.4. So, you divide the inviscid limit by 1.4 and then you get, you get uh, the allowable value. So, it is if this is say 10 to the power minus 3 seconds so 0 0.9 times 10 to the power minus 3 divided by 1.4. So, you are getting some factor of safety here and some factor of safety here together you are modulating you are modifying the inviscid limit uh, for the viscous uh, uh, limit viscous compressible limit is being uh, evaluated in this way. So, this is an estimated uh, stability limit and if you are within that McCormack has found that it is a it gives us a stable solution. Now, this has a specific feature here which means that firstly that there is an upper limit which means that you cannot have too large a value of delta t and you cannot have any arbitrary value of delta t. So, it may require if conditions are such that your delta t is very small then you have to compute for so many times before you can get up to a target time okay. <coughs> and the delta t here depends both on u and v it depends on delta x and delta y and it also depends on the speed of sound. So, if the speed of sound is very large then the delta t becomes small because this is uh, delta t must be less than u by delta x to the whole inverse. So, it is equal to delta x by u in a way. Okay. So, that means that as u increases delta t will decrease. So, in the case where you have large speed of sound the allowable delta t CFL itself is limited and the actual delta t that is limited for the viscous uh, coupled solution is less than the CFL limit. So, as the speed of sound increases as the flow becomes more and more encompassable the allowable delta t decreases and it can also decrease if your delta y is small or delta x is small. So, for example, when you have high speed flows then you have boundary layer formation. So, in the boundary layer is very thin so you need to have small delta y when you make your delta y small then delta t CFL will decrease and that will mean that uh, your allowable delta t decreases. So, there are certain restrictions limitations of the McCormack scheme it has first of all it has being explicit and like the conventional uh, uh, FTCS FTBS kind of uh, things it has an upper limit it has something like an effective current uh, number limitation and that current number limitation is crucially dependent on delta y and delta x and it is also dependent on the speed of sound. So, there are definitely conditions in which this particular method will have too low a value of delta t and improvements uh, are needed and one such improvement is the beam warming method and when we look at eliminating this delta t 
we would like to go from explicit to implicit and so we are going to look as a as an extra example as a different method implicit beam warming schemes it's not a single method there are variants here and it's an implicit method so one could expect to have uh, no stability condition but in actual case we have coupled equations and when we say coupled equations we are saying that when we are solving for u we need to know v and we are making some estimate of v it's not the exact estimate and if you take two large time steps and in the process v is changing then you could be wrong in in uh, the kind of values that you choose so even if you have an implicit scheme you may need to restrict the time limit to some values so that's something but implicit scheme will be better than an explicit scheme in terms of stability limit so that's what we are trying to do here we are looking at an alternative to the explicit mccormack scheme there is also an implicit mccormack scheme but we'd like to examine this implicit beam warming method which has also proved to be successful method and which employs a different way of taking account of nonlinearity which enables us to uh, get on this uh, limitation of delta t arising in boundary layer type of uh, uh, calculations where delta y is small <coughs> so in this part of the lecture we look at the uh, application of the implicit beam warming method or the derivation of the implicit beam warming method for the simple one dimensional case and so we are looking at uh, a one dimensional wave equation type of thing dou u by dou t plus dou f by dou x equal to 0 where f is u square by 2 it is a usual uh, uh, thing and we have put it like th in the previous cases in terms of the e and f's in the same way we have put we have put this particular equation. Now the idea is that we want to have a second order accurate implicit method. We already have a second order accurate explicit method that is the uh, uh, McCormack scheme. So we would like to improve on it so we cannot sacrifice the second order accuracy that is implied in the uh, McCormack thing. So we would like to do better than that by going for an implicit method. So the beam warming method is a, a certain way of deriving a second order accurate implicit method and we first expand u i n plus 1 around u i n. So we write this as u i n plus 1 equal to u i n plus delta t by delta t times dou u by dou t at i n plus delta t square by 2 factorial dou square u by dou t square i n plus terms of the order of delta t cubed. So that is uh, pretty straightforward and here the derivation is such that you are expanding u i n about i n plus 1. So th this is something uh, 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 unusual but uh, I would like you to note that in this case the derivatives are evaluated at i n. So this is expansion about point i comma n or x comma t and this is expansion about i comma n plus 1. So x comma t plus delta t. Okay. So that is the expansion of u i n as u i n. So the uh, u i n plus 1. So you have minus delta t dou u by dou t but it is evaluated at n plus 1 minus uh, it should be plus uh, delta t square by factorial 2 dou square u by dou t square i n plus 1 and so on up, uh, plus terms of the order of delta t cubed. So nothing different here okay, nothing new here except the fact that this is expansion about i n plus 1 and this is expansion about i n and uh, <coughs> so now you subtract this from this and what will you get you get u i n plus 1 minus u i n and you have equal to u i n they do not cancel out in fact this goes that side and then that gives that becomes 2 u i n. So once you do the sums you will see that u i n plus 1 is equal to u i n plus half of delta t times dou u by dou t i n which is coming from here plus dou u by dou t at i n plus 1 which is coming from here because you are subtracting this minus becomes uh, 0 and uh, 
so you have plus here so uh, it is a mistake here so when you put plus here and then you delete you subtract the two you subtract this from this they do not cancel out because this is dou square u by dou t square at i n and this is dou square u by dou t square at i n plus 1. If this is also at n then you can cancel out the two because this is at i n plus 1 they do not cancel out and so you have half of delta t square by factorial 2 dou square u by dou t square at i n minus dou square u by dou t square at i n plus 1 and so we can write u i n equal to u i n half of delta t times dou u by dou t at i n plus dou u by dou t at i n plus 1 and this can be written as dou by dou t of dou u by dou t times delta t. So, that becomes a delta t cube term. So, this we can neglect this and say that we have we are neglecting terms of the order of delta t cubed. So, this expression here is third order accurate as of now here. Now, we know that dou u by dou t is equal to dou f by uh, plus dou f by dou x equal to 0. So, we can say dou u by dou t equal to minus dou f by dou x. So, we can substitute that here. So, we have dou u by dou t at i comma n and that can be written as minus dou f by dou x at i comma n and here you have dou u by dou t at i comma n plus 1. So, you can write this as minus dou f by dou x at i comma n plus 1. So, we are making use of this equation here to convert these expressed in terms of time derivatives at i n plus 1 and all that in terms of the fluxes that are coming here and this is uh, a final expression. Now, when you bring the delta t here then this becomes a second order accurate expression here. Okay. So, now <coughs> the fluxes this f is actually u square u square by 2. So, it is a nonlinear thing. So, there is we need to make it linear we need to linearize it and so we write f n plus 1 that is coming here or f n that is coming here as f n plus 1 equal to f n the space index does not matter here it is uh, valid for all the things. So, we can write this as because n plus 1 and n here we can write this as dou f by dou t times delta t plus terms or the order of delta t square. So, this is f n and f is a function of u for example, we said f is u square by 2. Okay. So, we can write this dou f by dou t as dou f by dou u times dou u by dou t and plus terms of the order of delta t square that is uh, coming here and we represent this dou f by dou u as a and we can write this dou f by uh, uh, dou u by dou t as u n plus 1 minus u n divided by delta t. So, we are not doing anything here except bringing in the nomenclature of a being equal to dou f by dou u and uh, this being evaluated u n plus 1 minus u n divided by delta t and why we are doing that because in this case we are getting dou f by dou x like this we are getting a derivative. So, this will become dou by dou x of u n plus 1 minus dou by dou x of u n like that. So, finally, f n plus 1 is being evaluated evaluated as dou f uh, f n plus a times u n plus 1 minus u n and this approximation is also second order accurate. So, when you look at this terms coming from this approximation are second order accurate in time and these things are also being approximated in a second order accurate uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, thing here. So, it is not over yet. So, in order to uh, account for this I think it is just the same uh, thing I forgot to delete that. Uh, so, we have uh, f n uh, like this and therefore, now we can write dou f by dou x at n plus 1 as dou f by dou x at n plus dou by dou x uh, times 8 times u n plus 1 minus u n and why is that. Uh, so, we differentiate this with respect to x. So, you get dou f by dou x at n plus 1 equal to dou f by dou x at n 
plus dou by dou x of this whole thing and that is what we have here and we can make use of this expression here to write this as u i n plus 1 minus u i n divided by delta t equal to minus half dou f by dou x at i n plus dou f by dou x at uh, uh, i comma n which is coming from here plus dou by dou x of a times u i plus i n plus 1 minus u i n by delta t plus delta t uh, square. Okay. So, now we have this dou f by dou x here at i n and uh, uh, these kind of things and you have dou by dou x here. These things are evaluated using uh, central differences so that we can have second order accuracy in uh, space. So, once we do that we can write this as u i n plus 1 equal to u i n time, times delta t here and f i plus 1 minus f i minus 1 by 2 delta x is coming from here and uh, uh, you have this plus this 2 and this 2 will cancel out to give you this. Okay. So, uh, and this term is being evaluated as again you have the minus uh, 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 delta t that is uh, coming from here and you can write this as uh, <coughs> a i plus 1 n times u i plus 1 n plus 1 uh, minus a i minus 1 u i minus 1 n plus 1 by 2 delta x. Now, what are, what are we doing here? We are evaluating dou by dou x of this quantity here and this a here is a function of u it is dou f by dou u it can be a function of u here and we are evaluating this a at nth time step okay, so that this can be evaluated and we are evaluating this whole thing using central differences. So, we are writing this as a i plus 1 here u i plus 1 and we are writing for this one a u i n a i minus 1 and u i minus 1 here, but out of this these two terms both are functions of u a is being evaluated at n and u is being evaluated at n plus 1. So, this is uh, uh, I think this this is uh, n here. Ah. So, this is uh, uh, written as uh, this plus a i plus 1 n u i plus 1 n and a i minus 1 n and u i minus 1 n. Uh, so, you can see that this quantity here is being evaluated as half of use being evaluated at n plus 1 and use being evaluated at n. Okay. And so, that you, you are essentially getting n plus 1 and n average here. Okay. And we also have the a is always being evaluated at, at n and spatially u's are being evaluated in such a way that there is central differencing i plus 1 and i minus 1 and i plus 1 and i minus 1. So, together this gives us an approximation for the u i n plus 1 evaluation. So, if you look at this expression here what do we need in order to get u i n plus 1? We know u i n f i plus 1 n and uh, uh, so this is a tenth step. So, this can be evaluated explicitly and here a i plus 1 n. So, explicit evaluation here you have u i plus 1 n plus 1. So, this we do not know and you have u i minus 1 n plus 1 this also not known because this is a 10 plus 1 time step and here you have i plus 1 n n. So, this is known here this is known this is known. So, in the whole expression here in order to get u i n plus 1 you also need to know u i plus 1 n plus 1 and u i minus 1 n plus 1. So, together you have the equation here involves u i i n plus 1 as a function of u i plus 1 n plus 1 and u i minus 1 n plus 1. So, in 1 d case this gives us a tri diagonal matrix involving u i u i plus 1 and u i minus 1 
and you can write this as a tridiagonal matrix and then we need to solve it. So, to that extent this is an implicit formulation. Okay. So, when we look at the beam warming method for the solution of this, this equation here, we have derived a second order accurate in uh, time expression uh, of delta t square through manipulation and we finally brought it as dou f by dou axis and uh, all these things here and we have accounted for nonlinearity here and these spatial derivatives here and here are evaluated using central differences throughout so as to make it second order accurate in time in uh, space. So, second order accurate in time, second order accurate in space and implicit because u i n plus 1 uh, requires u i plus 1 n plus 1 and u i minus 1 n plus 1 and other terms which are uh, involving uh, the values at nth, nth time step. And finally, this is linearized because this u i n plus 1 has this a here, this a involves u. So, this is where the nonlinearity is coming, but we have avoided the nonlinearity by evaluating this coefficient a at nth time step. So, this is known as the Picard substitution. The nonlinear coefficient is evaluated using the old value and the actual variable value is evaluated using at the current time step. So, part of this nonlinearity is eliminated by making this coefficient based on the previous time step value. So, this particular overall scheme here is implicit, it is second order accurate in both time and space and it is linear and it gives us in this case of one dimensional calculation, it gives us a tridiagonal matrix uh, uh, equation and people have efficient methods for the solution of tridiagonal matrix methods. So, that is the advantage of the beam warming method. So, in the next lecture, we will see how this is actually used, can be used for the solution of our coupled equations, these equations, because these are the ones that need to be solved in the real case, it is not just a simple uh, one equation. But we can see how the method has come about. So, we can see how we have put together, how the method of beam warming method has been put together to solve uh, this equation by incorporating special features, the features that we would like to have. And what are those features here? When you finally get the prescription, the final prescription, we have u i n plus 1 being evaluated using a method which is second order accurate in time, second order accurate in space. So, that means that we have good accuracy and something that is linearized, it is f is a nonlinear term, it is linearized by having the coefficient here evaluated at uh, uh, nth time, the previous time step value. So, through the Picard substitution process, this has been linearized and finally, we have a desirable form of the implicit scheme. And what is the desirable form? It is a tridiagonal form. Tridiagonal form as we will see in module 5 in the next module is a, is a desirable form of a matrix equation for which efficient methods are known. And so, that means that we can solve the equations uh, efficiently very quickly without requiring too much memory and without requiring too much of uh, computational time. So, it incorporates all these features and what we have seen now is the case for a 1D uh, for one dimensional uh, flow case and also for a single equation dou u by dou t plus dou f by dou x equal to 0. And we will see how this whole thing is packaged together to solve all the equations that is the Navier-Stokes equation plus the energy equation for compressible flow in the next lecture.